Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Turner, Technical Director at SMD and in this short video I'm going to show you how to use our design software Elements version 2. Version 2 is recently being published and substantially updated to include not just the floor deck design that you're used to but also the addition of roof deck design. Um, so this is the launch screen and from this screen you can get to a number of places. There's some useful links at the top which takes you to our comprehensive TGN online guidance wiki page. Um, you can also email us, get to our website, link with us on social media and at the bottom here you see licensed partners who are companies that can manufacture or resell our product in different parts of the country or world. Um, principally you're going to want to get on with the design though so to do that you would click roof deck or floor deck. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the roof deck side so we will be clicking on this roof deck button but before you can do that, you need to have the um, terms of agreement ticked here. So once you've ticked that, that will stay ticked all the time. And then you click Roof Deck for the software to then load. The first screen that you'll see is the home screen. The software in general, as you can see at the top here, is a standard Windows setup with buttons for new, open, save. We also have these next and previous, which will navigate you through the different design stages within the software. Um, most importantly of all we have the calculate button which will run your calc once you've input all the design at the end and here is a selection window to select the relevant design standard but in the roof deck part of the software at the moment it is tied to um, in 1993 Eurocode 3 so no selection there. We also have these drop down options at the top with some useful links about the software and also um, routes to the shortcut buttons as well. At the bottom part of this screen you will see a change log that's just basically giving you information on what's changed from the previous version. Some technical information on SMD, what's going on at SMD in terms of product development, um, maybe offering you services and the information that we're making available to you to hopefully make your jobs easier. And then in the bottom right here we have the help and support window which is links to all our data sheets for our products, again another link for TGN online, the link to this video, suggest a feature and report a bug which we really rely on our users to help us develop this software to make it user friendly. So with regards to your actual calculation this window here on the home screen is where you put your job properties. You'll also see as you link over each window notes appear in this right hand area here. That just gives you some additional information on parts within the software. So for example, I'm hovering over project name, it's saying entry will appear in the header of your printed report. So that tells you what this bit's for. You essentially type in here what you want to see on your output report at the end of the calculation. So I've input some information here and once you've done that, you're then ready to start with the properties and the information required for your calculation or your kind of design criteria. So you can get to the next stage by either clicking the support layout button here which will take you to inputting your support layouts or for this purpose I'm going to use the next button. So as we see the next button has taken me to inputting the supports. So on the support layout pane we input our spans and we input our support details. So to input our spans you can see we've already got three spans of three meters. To delete one you just highlight the row and delete, as simple as that. To add one you can just type it back into the additional cells at the bottom, click away from that cell and we have three lots of three meters again. So it's fairly user friendly in adding and removing. If we want to change one we can change it to a lesser span and we see the image at the bottom changes for the configuration required. With regards to support layouts, you can choose hot or cold rolled sections. So have we got purlins? Have we got hot rolled? For the purpose of this one, I'm going to choose hot rolled. And each time I select something, you can see the top right hand corner, there's notes appearing related to the part that I'm hovering over. So on my support width, you can see it says hot rolled support minimum is 100. I'm going to say okay I've got a 200 support here and then I can move on to the next stage to input my loading. I'm going to do that this time rather than by pressing next by clicking on the loading pane 
and here we are at the loading pane to input our loadings. As you can see there are a number of default loadings in the software. These will need to be changed for each contract to suit the specific project requirements. To do that and to change these loads it's a simple delete very similar to the way with the span so we can just click delete and it's taken out my wind load there for example. You may also want to add loads or make them specific to your design so you, to do that you can edit any wind load name so here I'm going to call this one Jamie see because that's my name but we might want to add another one in that might be for something like a solar panel or something similar it's a permanent load so you, here you select is it a UDL is it a varying distributed load or is it a line load so we're gonna say UDL in this scenario you then select is it a self weight is it permanent is it variable well it's not going to be self weight so in that scenario it'd be permanent and when, then we can just put in the load that we wish and whereabouts on the sheet that we're designing that's seen still shown in this bottom image it occurs. So if I was to put in there this UDL is occurring from 0 to 3 you will have seen the solar panel load that I've input has changed just to be on one span. As standard the UDLs will appear over the whole section as you can see and as you click on each load it will show you whereabouts that is applying to the panel. That's really for clarity and allows you to be sure that the numbers you've input and the criteria that you're putting in terms of loading is correct. With all loadings input we can then move on to the load combinations. As standard the combinations are all the default Eurocode ones. You can see on the left here there's many for permanent plus variable, permanent plus snow, plus wind, permanent plus wind, snow etc that's with snow as the leading variable and also with wind as the leading variable in accordance with Eurocode. You can turn some off should you wish not to have them. You may not have to consider snow for whatever reason. So you could tick those off. You can tick them back on just as easily. Also on the right hand side here you'll see there's the SLS box to, that can be ticked. So there's four SLS combination checks and the rest are ULS. Um, should you wish for whatever reason to change that you can. And should you wish to change one of the safety factors, partial factors, you can as well. So you saw I've just changed that to 1.5, from 1.5 to 1.25. But I'm going to change it back just for the purposes of calculation, to keep it all with Eurocode compliance. As I say, there's probably unlikely to be that many cases where you'll need to change these. But should you wish to, the functionality is there. And then with the loading and the combinations now set, we move on to the fixings. Now on the fixings pane, the first thing you'll probably notice is that the image at the bottom has changed. So it's changed to really show you what you're specifying in terms of fixings, with the green being intermediate, the red being the end fixings, the blue being the seam fasteners, and the pink being the parallel fixings to the parallel supports. So on this pane, you're selecting your fixing type in terms of material, specification, frequency, both for supports and for seam fasteners. There's also quite an important note that you, you should read up here, which relates to making sure that you specify appropriate fixings for the application and the environment. So you will see carbon steel, stainless, or a custom fixing. There's a number of fixings within the software as standard, and these filter depending on the support type you've selected. So the XENP19 is a shot fired fixing because I've chose hot rolled steel. There's also some screw options for hot rolled steel, but we tend to use the um, shot fired fixing for program and uh, speed purposes, and it tends to have adequate capacity in most instances. You then need to select whether you want one or two per trough, so one per trough is the standard centers. Um, and then the parallel support spacing. So at end supports, we're going one per trough. And that means in these internals as well, we're going one per trough because that's not currently changeable. The parallel supports, we say, okay, let's put them in at 450. This information here all comes from the manufacturer of the given fixing. You can also put in a custom fixing if there's a fixing that you specifically want to use. You can put the information in here. You'll need all the custom information, um, but then it can run that for your calculation.
in this scenario I'm going to stick with the carbon steel EMP fixing. For the seam fasteners, similar, similar process, carbon steel, stainless steel custom fixing. Again, you could put that in if you wish, but as standard, there's a number of options in here. This is one we regularly use, which is a fixed fast um, tech screw. And we put in the centers we want. 450 is the standard. You may need to close these up in some instances where you maybe have done separate diaphragm design calculations. So with that information input, this will all be used in the uplift, wind uplift calculations to make sure that the fixings are adequate. We move on then to the analysis pane. Again, this time I'm going to do it by the next button. On the analysis pane, there's two main functions to input. The first being deflection limits. The standard deflection limits are those published in industry press, so the RCI magazine, for example, is also the standard limits used in UK industry. You can, if you wish, untick that and change those. Fairly straightforward, you can over type. But in this scenario, I'm going to use the defaults. The output options on the right in future will allow you to select standard or perforated profiles, so you might only want a perforated profile. But at the moment, with only standard profiles in here, that's the only option. The depth and gauge filters allows you to filter out the results that you will get when you run your calculations. So if you don't want anything, say, I don't want anything deeper than 100 profile because I've got limits on my roof depth. So I put in 100 there and I don't want my gauge to be any greater than one millimeter thick. Can't think of an example where you'd need that, but you may wish to keep costs down maybe by putting in a limit on your gauge of profile. So once you've done that, they're the only two things you need to input and you hit calculate you'll then be taken to the analysis screen and basically the summary of your calculation results. So on the summary screen, it's quite a useful function of this software is that it will run all the profiles and let you know which ones do and don't work. So for this, we had you saw we had three meter spans at the start. We also decided that we wanted a 30 to 100 profile. So it's showing our SR100 plus profile right down to our SR30 profile. And then it's also giving you the unity factors for moment, shear, deflection, uplift, combined effect, and the maximum unity factor of all of those. So at a very quick glance, you can see that the 30 and the 35 deep profiles, the SR30 plus and the SR35 plus are failing, which is not unexpected for the loads and spans that we input. And you can see that in each of the 100 or the SR60 plus profiles, that both the 0.7 and 0.9 options work. So you may think to yourself, okay, 0.61, I'm happy with that unity factor. I'm also happy with 0.65, but I'm, I'm happy to go deeper and go with the 0.61 unity factor. So then you select, by selecting on the profile you wish, you'll then see at the bottom of the screen, it indicates the profile you've selected, a little image of what it looks like, the grade and gauge, and then the maximum unity factor. Once you've done that, you can then look at the report or the graphical results. So if we look at the graphical results first, you can have a look at any of the load combinations and within those combinations, so if I choose wind plus snow, within those combinations, you can look at shear, you can look at the moment diagram, you can look at the deflection diagram based on the loads and input that we gave way back at the loading pane. Then following that, you can move on to the report which is the bit you're going to be probably most interested in. As we said at the start, it shows the input text that you put in the properties pane. And then as you move down, it shows you an image of the product at the top. It'll then show you your support layouts, your loading that you've input. So you can see we put we changed mine to Jamie. We put one load over this span only, which is the solar panel pink load. You can just see in there. And then you've got further information on the loadings, the combinations, and basically all the criteria that you've input along with the results of that. There's also a few notes to be read at the bottom which link back to considerations that have been applied during the calculation. So from there you can then do as you wish. You can print preview, you can print it maybe to a PDF, and that is your calculation over. I hope you find it useful and I specifically think that going back to the summary and then thinking maybe I wanted the 60 
clicking over, then go to the report, and you end up with this being the 60 cap. I think that part of this software will be, be very useful for designers in determining which product is most suitable and then being able to make a judgment on which one they feel is the best for their design. I hope this has been helpful and it would be really great to have any feedback as I said at the very start via this additional tools function on the home tab or also if you look in the drop down of options if you want to report an error or a bug or something you think isn't quite right or suggest a new feature then that would be great to hear from you. Thanks very much.